Number four, unreasonable results. You are told that a basketball player spins the ball with an angular acceleration of 100 radians per second squared. Letter A, what is the ball's final angular velocity if the ball starts from rest and the acceleration lasts two seconds? All right, so um, when we consider a problem like this, uh, the best thing to do is actually to, I think it'll make a lot of sense if you just get rid of the words angular. All right, uh, so if we go back to the problem, get rid of this word, I'll put it in red, get rid of this word, and get rid of this word. All right, so basically, if you had something that was accelerating with a certain value, and you were trying to find the final velocity of that thing, and it told you that the ball's initial velocity was starting from rest, and they also told you that the acceleration lasts about two seconds, I bet you could probably figure this out easily, right? You're thinking to yourself, well, I know acceleration, check. I know the initial velocity that was zero. I know uh, the time, check. And I'm asked to find the final velocity. That's the question. You might say to yourself, oh, easy, kinematics, right? Oh, I should use the formula final velocity is equal to initial velocity plus acceleration times time. And voila, now you'd be right, right? So the same idea though is applied to the angular values. Consider the angular values analogs, meaning similar to the linear values. So they told you the angular acceleration. They told you the initial angle, angular velocity. They told you the time and they're asking you to find the final angular velocity. So therefore, the equation is going to be basically identical to this, just in the rotational analog. Meaning that instead of V, I'm going to use omega. Instead of A, I'm going to use alpha. Okay, so the equation is this. Omega F, the final angular velocity, is equal to omega I, the initial angular velocity, plus the angular acceleration multiplied by time. Simple problem now, right? So now we can just... We're asked to find the final, so now all we have to do is just plug in the values. So we know we have an initial value of zero. The angular acceleration, as they told us, was 100 radians per second. It's back in the problem as well. Uh, well, radians per second squared, that is. Multiplied then by the time of two seconds. So here we have a final angular velocity of 200, right? And that is in radians per second. So that's the answer. I mean, it was easy peasy, right? So that was take uh, that was letter A. So then it says, what is unreasonable uh, about this result? So I mean, just by knowing the values, this this is a, such a very very large particular uh, angular velocity. Uh, but you know, to to really kind of think about why this would be the case, why don't we try to find out? I'm not gonna I'm gonna do this quickly because uh, you don't really have to do this for this question. But um, why don't we find out the force? Right, that was necessary or that the basketball player was imparting to the ball in order to give it this angular uh, acceleration. All right, so you have to think, well, here's our basketball. It has a certain radius. Let's assume the radius of a basketball is 0.12 meters, which is, a pro which is appropriate. Let's also assume that, the, uh, that the, this particular ball has a certain mass, all right? And let's assume that the mass of the ball is gonna be about I don't know, maybe uh, two kilo, or excuse me, a half a kilogram. It's probably a little over a pound. Yeah, that's that's probably reasonable. So let's assume that the mass is a half a kilogram, all right, and it has this radius. Now I'm going to then basically the when the player spins the ball, right? If you've ever spun a basketball, you're applying a force on the uh, surface of the sphere, right? So you're looking to apply a force, you know, in this. I mean, you could have applied it down, or I'm really trying to apply it actually into the paper, but I can't really show that because it's two-dimensional. Um, so just pretend that we're applying uh, this particular force, and it would be a tangential force, right, on the exterior of the sphere. Oh, wait a minute, I'm applying a force at a distance to an axis of rotation. <gasps> torque? No. Torque in this problem? Yes, torque is in this problem, all right? So basically now you have to use this equation to help us find the uh, force that's produced. All right, so that equation over here is going to be the sum of the torques and the problem will equal IA. 
Now, the, let's assume that there's no friction and the only torque that is in the problem is the torque being produced by this force. We'll call it F. All right, at a distance of 0.12 meters from the axis of rotation of the ball. So now that means that the only torque, again, is just that particular force I described. So remember the formula that torque is equal to force multiplied by the perpendicular lever arm. All right, and I know the perpendicular lever arm. It's 0.12. So basically I can just substitute this on out. So now this becomes F times R is equal to I, which is moment of inertia, times alpha. I don't know why, I, it looks like an A over there, but that should be an alpha. Meaning it looks like an A over here, but it definitely is an alpha. So in order for me to find uh, F, I have to you know, know all the other variables and here's the moment of inertia. Now you, um, I think it's on page 359 maybe of your textbook. You, I don't, you, most likely you'll be given those uh, moment of inertias. I had to memorize them when I took this class. So hopefully, uh, your professors are less uh, sadistic than mine was. Now, the moment of inertia for the sphere, uh, given the context of where the force is applied and the axis of rotation, right? The axis of rotation is directly down the middle. Uh, we would have a moment of inertia here, I, that has a value of, well, I'll write it down over here. It should be 2mr squared over 5. All right, where m stands for the mass, and R stands for the uh, radius of the sphere. So what I'm gonna do now is plug that into my formula. So now I'll, I'll do more of the work on this side. So it's FR is equal to then two MR squared over five multiplied then by alpha. Now notice I can cancel one of the R, well, I can cancel this R with one of these because it's just the radius. So let's write the simplified equation right here. So we have F is equal to 2MR over 5 multiplied then by the angular acceleration. So if I now plug in all my values, I'd have 2 times the mass, which was 0.5, times then the radius, which was 0.12, all over 5 multiplied then by 100. And that should now be equal to, let's take out our calculator. So 2 times 0 0.5 times 0.12 times 100, all divided by then 5, we get a value of about 2.4 newtons. Okay, 2.4 uh, newtons. So that's the amount of force that the player is applying. Now, that's actually quite a, uh, that's a fairly tiny force, actually. Um, you know, if you relate that to, you know, how much, uh, how heavy of an object would you have to supply this force to lift it, you would take 2.4 and divide it by uh, 9.8, right? You get about a quarter or so. So it's only a quarter of a pound that is being applied here. So I don't think that that's the unreasonable part, actually. I think that sounds maybe even a little, uh, even a little low. But the question is that, um, so I don't think that's the unreasonable part. I think the unreasonable part is then that it lasts for two seconds, okay? Um, think about, you know, what this, uh, is implying here in the in the formula this is applying that uh, this is implying that you're going to have a revolution right or 2 or 200 radian per second rotation how many revolutions is that then per second we'll take 200 and then divide it by the 2 pi right because we know that there are 2 pi radians in one revolution so we'll do, it's basically 100 then divided by pi and what do we get we get about 31.8 revolutions, 1.8 revolutions per second, okay? Now that sounds a little unreasonable to me. I mean, the, the, that's, you know, that, that's a lot, a lot of revolutions there for that sphere to be going around on your finger, uh, let alone any type of friction that's going to be produced on your finger then. Uh, but it, it, it sounds quite uh, extreme, all right? So I guess that would be the uh, unreasonable premise here. Uh, probably the acceleration lasting for uh, two seconds. Most likely the acceleration, it's not constant, it's greatest at the beginning, and then it will decrease over time as the ball reaches its maximum uh, angular velocity, uh, which will probably be less than the 31.8. Guys, thanks for tuning in. All right, please remember to subscribe, helps us out tremendously, and I'll see you in the next question. Take care.